Jackson, and there's quite a bit of controversy uh, around what actually took place on scene prior to them calling 911. Okay, this is important to look at. Okay, uh, the last that I have heard, and this is from watching the news and getting some of the reports, was that um, CPR was done on Mr. Jackson for quite a while prior to EMS arrival. Anybody hear that? Okay. Okay, CPR was done prior to arrival. The problem here is, is when the patient was found, okay, he was still breathing and had a pulse. Okay? Question, do you do CPR on somebody that is breathing and has a pulse? No. Okay. Do you do CPR on somebody that is breathing? What if, you, what if they're breathing and you cannot find a pulse? Not a trick question. They're breathing, barely breathing, but it's consistent, but you cannot find a pulse. What could that mean? We're almost dead. <laughs> <ahead. laughs> They're not having any good cardiac output, so they could be like V-fib or something like that. Okay. If he was in V-fib, he wouldn't be breathing. Okay. V-fib means that the ventricles, actually the heart is just firing erratically. Okay. There's no uh, rhythmic pump to the pump. The pump is not pumping correctly, so you have no, no cardiac output at all, which means you're not going to be breathing. Okay. What about a low blood pressure? Isn't our goal to perfuse the brain? I mean, that's mainly we want to keep oxygen to the brain. If the person is still breathing, they're still giving oxygen to the brain or they can stop breathing. Exactly. Okay. Remember this. If you have a patient who is unconscious, okay, they do not respond. What's the first thing you should do if you're not in an emergency environment already? What should you do? Common sense. Call for help. Call 911. That, that's what needs to happen. Unresponsive people who are breathing are alive still, which means that they don't get chest compressions for us. They go in what we call a recovery position. Typically, uh, we're going to put them on their side. Any idea why we do that? Yeah. We don't want them to aspirate or anything like that. We put them in the recovery position, we call for an ambulance, and we monitor them. We reassess to make sure that they are still moving air. Okay? Now, the pulse check has been something that's been emphasized over the years. Um, and in my opinion, sometimes a little too much has been emphasized. Uh, number one, if I have a breathing patient, right then I know that the heart is working. Is that correct? Okay. The heart's working if they're breathing. Now, I'm talking about consistent breaths. Even if they're shallow, if it's in, out, in, out, in, out, and it's consistent, the pump is working. doesn't matter if you can't find it. If you can't find it, it could be a low blood pressure, it could be poor circulation, there could be a number of things that could cause that. Okay? It could be the temperature, it could be very cold, maybe the type of thermic. Okay? These types of conditions can make it difficult to find a pulse. What if the person's really large? Okay? 350, 400 pounds, uh, it can be quite a challenge to find a pulse on this person. But if I've got breaths, I've got somebody that's alive, they go in the recovery position. Does that make sense? Okay. If you cannot tell if the person's breathing, you're not sure if they're breathing. Um, this is where the tap and shop comes in, okay? You know, I'm sure you've seen it on the old CPR videos. Are you okay? Are you okay? There's a reason we do that, because if they respond, that also tells me that they're alive. And if I'm not sure if they're moving air, I might give them a little bit of painful stimulus, okay, a strong rub, uh, to see if they flinch or move or anything like that, because if that happens, that also means that they're alive, okay? Um, I have handled plenty of patients that were unresponsive that looked dead as a boy. And they're not. Okay? Diabetics are a classic example. These folks who look dead, dead, dead. And they're not dead. Okay? All they need is a little bit of sugar, a little oxygen, and they'll be okay. Make sense? Okay, so you find Michael, um, you find him unresponsive, you see that he's still breathing, you put him in a recovery position, you call for emergency services. Okay? If you're the only one there, do you leave him to call for emergency services if you do not have a cell phone? Absolutely. Okay? What's going to happen if nobody's called? He's going to die. That's what's going to happen. So you need to leave, find a phone, and make your call so that somebody is on the way sooner than later. Okay, let's, yes? Do you do the two rescue vests before you go and call? Or if he's breathing on his own, no. Okay, oh no, I mean if the person's unconscious. He is. He's unconscious. We'll get to that. Oh, okay. He's unconscious. He's still breathing. Yeah, he's still breathing. You got him in the recovery position, correct? 
we go make our call. 911, what's your emergency? I have somebody that's unresponsive. Okay, period. We're going to ask questions and uh, you answer to the best of your ability, and then off we go. Okay? You hang up the phone, whatever you need to do, and you come back and reassess your patient to see if he is still breathing. I want to see if he's still breathing. So I'm going to tap, and I'm going to look. Uh, yeah, he's still breathing. So what do I do? Wait. Right? He's unresponsive. Oh, he's I'm feeling his skin, so it's cool and moist and sticky. You know he's sick. Shoot. Security comes in. Okay. Do something for him. Open his jaw so he can get better. Is there anything that you really need to do? This is one of those situations where anything could be wrong with him. We have no idea what's going on. As far as basic life support if interventions are concerned, there's nothing really here that we need to do other than put him on the side and reassess and wait. Okay? We don't need to overdo it. Um, he's just waiting. And this is one of those situations where you're going to feel helpless. But you've actually responded very effectively. You did your initial assessment and determined that he was still breathing. Okay? You activated the system. And that's what was done. That's all that needs to be done.